Hello, hello. Hi, it's Colin here from Grade A Computer Science, helping you to get that Grade A in Computer Science, of course. And today we're going to be looking at nine important components of a processor. So let's let's get into it. So what we've got here is uh, some components here which form part of the, the processor, the arithmetic logic units, the control unit, the program counter, the current instruction register, status register, the memory address register, and the memory data register. And then we have some general purpose registers here, which uh, the CPU will use. There's one other thing that we don't show here, which is the system clock. Let's, let's move on and I'll show you what we have. So the components of the processor are the arithmetic logic unit, the control unit, the system clock, the dedicated registers, the general purpose registers. So the functions of the processor. So the, the processor controls main storage and to store, its function is to store data and instructions. So we are storing both data and instructions and this refers back to the von Neumann principle, if you know anything about the storage uh, concept, uh, the data storage concept, and it uses the von Neumann idea that you can have programs and data within, within memory. So have a look at that. Now, uh, the function of the processor, it also controls the sequence of operations. So the program itself will be a sequence of different instructions and the processor will control that sequence. It also gives commands to all parts of the computer system. So you can see it's a very important part of the system and it also carries out processing. Now, of course, it uses all these different parts here in order for that to happen. So let's start with the arithmetic logic units, the ALU. So the ALU carries out arithmetic operations such as add, subtract, multiply and divide. Those are your arithmetic operations. But it also carries out logical operations or Boolean operations, comparing two values and operations or not exclusive for and shift operations. The ALU and the control unit do work together um, to ensure that the processing is done to time, it's all synced up and uh, any interrupts are catered for. So we'll see how that is done. Then we have the control unit. So the control unit controls the activities of the CPU, directing the flow of data between the CPU and other devices. So you don't want lots of data coming at the CPU from all different devices. There needs to be a, a control mechanism to make sure that one device after another can communicate with the CPU. And that's the, uh, that's the role of the control unit. It's the nerve center of the computer coordinating all hardware operations, for example, printers, scanners, CD drives, main memory, and the processor itself. So it very much controls, as I said, the flow of data between the CPU and the other devices. Now, the system clock. The system clock sets the timing for the operation of the processor and the computer system. This is a very important part of the system. Um, the system clock generates signals switching between one and zero billions of times per second. Now, why do they say that? Uh, that should be one and four billions of times per second. So uh, a four gigahertz clock ticks at four billion times per second. Can you imagine that? Four billion times per second. The CPU carries out instruction, instructions in timing with the system clock. So those signals are generated by the signal clock switching between one and four billions of times per second, certainly in uh, computer systems of today. And of course there are some dedicated registers. So we have the program counter 
which is the, a dedicated register which holds the uh, the instruction uh, for the next uh, piece of data that's going to be retrieved so the program counts up where we are in the program and uh, you'll be able to see uh, how this works if you look at the de the my uh, video on the fetch decode and execute cycle that's the fetch decode and execute cycle have a look at that video and you'll be able to see more about how these registers work together so we have the program counter we have the current instruction register the memory address register which holds the memory uh, the sorry which holds the address that needs to be retrieved in order from the memory we have the memory buffer register also known as the memory data register which contains the data that has been retrieved and of course we have the status register the program counter this register holds the address of the next instruction to be executed so it holds the address the address of the next instruction to be executed okay the current instruction register this register holds the current instruction register the current instruction that's being executed so the way it works is that the program counter will copy its uh, address into the uh, current instruction register and the current instruction register will then carry out that instruction the memory address register this register this register holds the address of the instruction to be fetched from the memory or to be written to the memory so it is a an address register uh, again it's a buffer register because that address register will be moved on to another register so that's the memory address register then we have the memory buffer register this register is a temporary hold for the data that has been fetched from the memory or is to be written to the memory uh, it's also known as the memory data register the MDR and all transfers from memory to the CPU go via the MBR so that's a very important point that all transfers from memory to the CPU go via the MBR so they will be copied from memory into the MBR and then copied into whatever register they need to go into or whatever memory again if you look at my video on the fetch decode and execute cycle you'll be able to get a better idea of how that works the status register this register depends on the outcome of an executed instruction so for instance when an instruction is executed bits in the status register are set or cleared for example if the last instruction was negative or zero or initiated a carry status registers will be set and then the CPU will have to respond to how that status register has been uh, has been set so for instance there may have been an interrupt the processor may have been interrupted by a printer wanting to print the CPU will need to check whether that has happened and if it has happened it needs to give that printer time in order to for the instructions for printing to be take, to be carried out we also have some general purpose registers registers are very fast memory typically numbered R, R0 to R15 so we've got 16 magic registers arithmetic logic and shift operations take place in these registers for example if you're going to add two numbers together what we're going to do here is we load the contents of 50 so we're going to add 50 we load them into R1 which is our register 1 we can also add, we then add the contents of 60 to R1 so we can uh, add the contents of the number 60 to R1 so 60 plus 50 is 110 we'll then store the contents of R1 in 70 which is the memory location 70 so this is that's just an example of how uh, the registers can be used we have the accumulator which is a single register the accumulator is a general purpose register used when there is only a single register available now most 
processors today have multiple registers, but some still use a single register. So there we have it. There we have a schematic of the CPU with uh, the different registers, the different components. Uh, of course, I would uh, encourage you to uh, memorize these components and memorize how they work with each other and the role that they play within the CPU.